Hey, Cynthia, hi. Hi, Barb. <laughs> Welcome to uh, podcast episode 39. Oh, my God. <laughs> From River City Yarns. <laughs> right. We're trying something new today. We're, we're coming to you via Zoom. Right, Cynthia? That's, that's what that's it's called. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we're yes. practicing, we're practicing social distancing, aren't we? Yes, yes. We're doing our best, everybody. It's tough, though. Wow, we've had quite a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Barb, you're at home right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm at home, and you are at the store with a beautiful uh, background of <laughs> lovely yarn. That looks great. <laughs> Yes, I'm I'm upstairs in our on our mezzanine level and I'm sitting in front of all the beautiful epic yarn that we um that we bring in from Peru. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice place to be today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's been a wild kind of week, right? Tell, um do you want to tell everybody what we've been up to? Well, let's see. Uh what about a week, a week and a half ago, we had to close our store for online or sorry for in-store uh shopping um, right. because of the pandemic and uh so we've really been focused on fulfilling online orders mm-hmm. and on um and on you know answering the phone and answering emails and also our staff are at home yeah. uh practicing social distancing as well right. and so we've been kind of doing it on our own yeah and you know, um, has it been like a week, or a week or ten days since we've actually been physically closed? I can't even remember. In fact, I had to get up this morning and ask Mario what day it was. I couldn't remember. It's like every day is like um, you know blurring into one another. Yeah, that's that's very true. And uh, we've we've had to learn to do business differently, haven't we? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were just um, kind of mentioning too. Cynthia said that we were offering, um, you know, kind of like phone service consultation, and you know that for us was a big part of our business when we were open. People would come in and say, "I have this pattern. I need some yarn. What do I use?" Well, that's still happening. Only it's happening by email and by phone, and it's really fun to do that. It's it's just a little longer process. I think by email, right? Where you have to kind of go back and forth and back and forth, but it can be done. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you're right. Having a written conversation with people definitely takes longer than it would to talk to them on the phone or by video chat. Uh, but it's, it, it's been educational. I had a, a, probably about a 40 minute conversation with a customer this week where I went online with her to Ravelry and we found a pattern and then we went to the online store and we found yarn and needles and everything that she needed for her project and then she completed the online order so uh, it's a bit of education for people who aren't used to using the online services that we have Mm -hmm. yeah but it is uh, possible and it's it's been a lot of fun I think it really is a way of um, still providing that service that we can to our community just to over a different format. That's right. And uh, I think so. And I think we feel really lucky that we've, uh, that we've been working for quite a while on our online store platform. So that wasn't a huge transition for us. What's right. changed, of course, is the number of people that we have working and the number of people we have answering the phone and answering emails. Um, and so we're, we're slowly getting coordinated that way with, um, you know, the, the staff that we have working at home, trying to find some, some different jobs for them. Yes, I think that's the part, Cynthia, that I miss the most is having a whole bunch of people around me. You know, when I'm at the store, it's just a little hubbub. It's like our big family. Yes. And, uh, I just miss each and every one of them. But, you know, we have to do what we have to do because we have to stay healthy. That's um, of prime importance. That's the number one thing. Right that's now, right. everybody's staying healthy. That's right. So, so the um, I don't know if it's if it's the irony. You know that that meme that's been going around about hay knitters and crocheters. Uh, mm-hmm. This is what we've been preparing for for the last for the for, for all of our lives. You know, is this 
period of time when you have to stay home. And uh, so, oh, oh dear, you know, what am I going to do? I'll, I'll knit or crochet. But you and I haven't been staying home. We've no. been here at the store. <laughs> I know. And, and it's really funny, too, because we've been trying to stay apart from each other. So our first few days, you had the front of the store. I had the back of the store. I was mailing out parcels and you were delivering parcels to people who were coming curbside to pick them up. And you were answering the phone or we were sharing that responsibility. And so it's been like, um, like we've, we've been there, you know, it's, it hasn't, we haven't, I haven't had much time at home. No, we've been here every day. Uh, and uh, we, well, we're not answering the phones. Maybe on Sunday, we're certainly picking picking things and then restocking. And I know that you've been at home looking at doing some reordering. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you have some stuff to tell us about the way suppliers are dealing with this um, pandemic issue as well. I've had a number of emails from our suppliers saying, you know what, we've had to close. Um, you know, it, our the mill that we buy our Epic yarn from in Peru, um, Peru's completely closed. So there's no flights going in or out. Uh, and there's they've been told to quarantine just like everybody else. And so there is no way to get yarn right now. They've given us dates, uh, you know, like every uh, supplier um, who's in that same situation is saying, you know, stay tuned for you know April 10th or April 15th or April whatever is for updates. So everybody's just playing it kind of day at a time until we find out what's going on. So there are still some of our suppliers that are uh, able to fill orders. It's just backlogged. I think the folks at Brooklyn Tweed um, are um, down to like one guy in the warehouse who's filling all the orders. So everybody's practicing that, you know, safe social distance and, um, you know, not putting putting people together, um, operating as best they can on as few staff as they can. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, speaking of Brooklyn Tweed, uh, they they did a very generous promotion. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, too? Sure. Sure. Yeah. um, You know, Brooklyn Tweed came out. Oh, what was it about? I think it started March the 18th. They came out with a special promotion targeted at people who might be a little financially strapped right now. You know, that's all of us, right? Where we're used to having a regular income come in. But when this happens, um, you know, you're suddenly in a situation where you've got bills and no money. And so as knitters, um, you know, Brooklyn Tweed wanted to put their yarn in the hands of knitters and help yarn stores at the same time. So they came out with a discount program. We jumped in and offered out our customers the largest percentage, 30% off all Brooklyn Tweed yarns. And stores um, are going to be getting a rebate from Brooklyn Tweed for that discount amount. So it helps everybody. It helps all our customers uh, be able to knit with a yarn that otherwise might be a little bit too expensive. And um, it helps us reorder and reorder at a bit of a discount. So we've got a really good response to that. People um, ordered lots of Brooklyn Tweed. I think many, many people are doing the Weekender by Andrea Maori, uh, as well as lots of other sweaters and hats and mittens. And they've got so many great yarns. So, you know, thank you to Brooklyn Tweed. They've really helped us. Uh, maintain some sales in the first you know few weeks of this pandemic yeah it's it's been a very like shelter for example and uh i think peary and arbor and loft i mean in quarry they've all been uh they've all been selling really well online mm-hmm. and uh but in particular maybe shelter hey i think that's the top one yes yeah yeah, I think maybe that's part of, uh, you know, the governments have been telling people to shelter in place. So maybe that's why. <laughs> maybe, that's right. That's a really good uh, play on words. So we are going to be getting some more. I just talked with Brooklyn Tweed today, and they're going to uh, restock us on shelter. And um, we're going to continue the promotion. I think it goes until sometime in May. So 
If yeah. anybody didn't get enough and you want some more, um, just stay tuned. <laughs> That's great. So we'll uh, we'll put that announcement out in probably in a newsletter. So if you don't already subscribe to our newsletter, you can do that at www.rivercityyarns.com. I'll just mm-hmm. put a little plug in for that. Yeah. And um, and yeah, the, the other thing that's kind of changed for us is that we're not able to offer our workshops right now. Right. Uh, we, um, we kind of had to cut a few, a couple of them off sort of midstream because of the, the need to provide social distancing and, um, just not being able to really do that in our space and uh, and our customers not feeling comfortable with that either. So we just decided to call a halt to our workshops, our in-person workshops until until whatever time comes that we can actually gather again in small groups. Yeah. And same thing with our instructors too. Like we didn't want to have them at risk either. So we just thought it was best to cancel everything. Yeah, so we've been trying something new, um, and that's, uh, well, actually, it's not new for us. We've been putting uh, tutorial videos on our uh, YouTube channel for quite a while, but uh, we just posted up one uh, this past weekend on uh, how to uh, learn to knit. And um, I'm working on one at my kitchen table that is a how to crochet video also. So we'll keep adding to our tutorial videos on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who want to find our YouTube channel easily, uh, you can go to www.podcaston.ca. I'll put a link to that in the show notes just below here. Um, And or you can go to YouTube and just uh, search for River City Yarns. And you'll find our YouTube channel with all of our playlists there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great. You know, Cynthia, I think that was great timing that you did the Knitting 101 because we had so many people who had their kids now at home with them. All the schools here in Edmonton have been closed. I'm sure like, you know, other cities that you're in, that you live in, um, our schools closed here too. And the parents are at home trying to do some homeschooling. And so um, teaching your kids how to knit would probably be such a fun thing to do. So that video was great timing. Yeah, I think, I think so too. I think there's some adults who might like to learn how to knit also. And I think it's a great activity for, you know, parents and kids to do together. Mm -hmm. So, um, so hopefully, you know, people take advantage of that and uh, give it, give it a try. Right. Yeah. That's great. And you've got a whole kit and everything too, that people can order if they want to, right? Yeah, so in the video, we explain what kind of materials we think are um, important for learning to knit or crochet. And uh, we always recommend products that um, are easy on the hands and easy for learners, but also that you can purchase in our online store. So yeah, there's a, a full set of recommendations right at the beginning of the video so that you know what you need to bring to the table uh, when, you, when you're going to learn to knit or crochet. Good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I was just going to mention too, you know, we were talking about Brooklyn Tweed being so generous. Um, some of our other suppliers too um, are really generous. We just got a note that Shibui um, is offering their patterns, the Shibui pattern line, uh, a free pattern with every purchase. So if anybody wants to do a Shibui project, that's available now. And um, the other thing was uh, Rowan. Rowan came out with a whole list of patterns that support their yarns. So if you have any Rowan yarns at home that you're wondering, what should I do with this? You can go to the Rowan website and pull off some free patterning there. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. I, I noticed that you had offered a customer who was ordering some Shibui yarn the other day. You offered her a free pattern. That was really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the Julie Hoover series. Uh, right. Shibui doesn't have those because they don't belong to them. They're part of Julie's offering. Uh, but if anybody would like to knit a Julie Hoover design with the Shibui yarn, we'd be happy to um, buy a pattern for you and send it along electronically. Oh, that's really nice, Barb. So if, if somebody orders Shibui yarns on our website, then they can follow up with an email. There's an email um, link in the in in on our Shopify page. And you can tell us uh, what pattern it is that you're looking for. 
Yes, and, and your Ravelry name, and then we'll just send it to you. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's a really nice promotion. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of nice just to make it easy, and then it's everything's done, right? You right. Know, get your yarn, your needles, your pattern, and away you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about um, some, of the, some of the fun things that are happening here at the store. Sure. We've got a... Yeah. We got it. So speaking of suppliers, uh, the supplier for our Epic line behind me here, they've had to close their um, uh, their their mill for a little bit, and they're not doing any shipping. But before this happened, we received a special shipment from them. That's right. Yeah, we've been talking with them from some t- for some time about their alpaca. I mean, um, you know, the alpaca from Peru is some of the nicest in the whole world. And uh, our mill has a line of alpaca that's 100% baby alpaca. So it's very, very soft. We've had baby alpaca in the past, uh, but this time we're able to buy it directly from the mill. And so what that does is it gives us a great price point. We can go directly to our customers with the most beautiful alpaca at a great price. There, There we go, okay. So we had a lot of fun with this. We decided, what are we going to name it? We have, we have to think of a name. And so um, our marketing manager came up with this. El Rio means river in Spanish. And it just seemed fitting that we have a, a Peruvian alpaca, especially for river city yarns, called El Rio. So here it is. Um, you may have alpaca like this. We used to have uh, a line of alpaca uh, from Illimani that was very similar to this. Uh, just a very soft, what would you say, Cynthia, four-ply? Uh, so it's a worsted weight, right? And I think it's DK. Well, it's probably DK worsted, right, depending on okay. what the size you use. And let's see here. And it is uh, four Four plies in the yarn, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and it's oh, so, so soft. <laughs> it's one of those yarns you just want to, you know, cuddle with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, I've been knitting up a few things from it just to sort of sample it. And it's, it is, it's beautiful. Right. Shall I, sh- shall I show everybody one of the things sure. that you made? Yeah. So this, this comes under our finished objects section. Uh, <laughs> but, jumping uh, all around here today. Tell us about this, Barb. Okay. Well, this is Rosalind's cowl. So we did. We have a pattern called Rosalind's cowl, and we do it out of Epic yarn. Isn't that soft, Cynthia? Yeah, and it smells like you too. <laughs> well, um, I couldn't resist. I wanted to do some color work, and so I cast on. Um, and did Rosalind cowl pattern. It was just so much fun because this is done in the round. Any ends just end up getting hidden in the middle. And then for the inside, I just did it out of uh, a single color. Yeah, so there's the inside. You could wear it that way too. It's totally reversible. Um, and Gorgeous. I love the colors that you picked, Barb. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. And isn't it soft? Yeah. There is a there is a seam there because when you're knitting in the round, you know your rounds don't line up uh, perfectly. But when you put it on, you put the seam in the back. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful, fun knit. I loved it, and um, I, I love the way the alpaca drapes in that. It's really soft. It's probably not something I'd use for a sweater, but I definitely use it for a capelet or um, scarves or wraps. Right, mitten liners, anything where you want something really, really soft next to your skin. So why wouldn't you use it for a sweater? In my experience, I mean, alpaca stretches, right? I've knit a sweater that was, you know, supposed to be hip length and it ended up being like a coat. So um, I think, you know, unless uh, you mix it with something else, which is always an option, uh, I'd love to try next knitting it with Epic Yarn. I think Epic and El Rio would be fantastic in any sort of chunky project. Oh, so you're thinking like hold the two yarns together 
Yes. In fact, some of them are color matched quite nicely. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, there might be some kind of chunky projects on the on the horizon there. I also took uh, El Rio and mixed it with Kids So Case to do Annabella's Cowl. I did a couple of those and they turned out really, really nice. Oh, good. So we'll get to see those sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll show you next time. I, it's, I, I left it at the store, Cynthia. So that's, I thought I had it here, but no. Okay. I'll try and take a couple of snapshots or a short video and uh, pop it into this, this recording. Yeah. You know, I think too that you could also take El Rio and put it with a really fine wool, um, maybe like Valley Tweed, and create another nice little blend that you could do a sweater out of. Oh, good. So El Rio will be on our website. Um, mm-hmm. You can find it under Yarns and then under RCY Originals. Uh, oh. It's going to be our own label, our own in-house label, right? That's right. And I think we've got about eight or 10 colors right now with another 14 or so coming. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we just have to get over this. uh, We just have to get over this pandemic that's kind of gripped the world and then we'll get back to our regular shipments. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we should also talk about speaking of being in a time of pandemic uh, we had another conversation just recently with our friends at Ancient Arts, mm-hmm. and we talked to them about doing a promotion coming up on um, uh, with with the yarns that we carry in our store. Um, yeah. We've been talking to them because they were scheduled to go to Knit City in Montreal, and of course that event got cancelled. So they ended up with a lot of yarn that had been dyed for uh, for that event. And then when Knit City got, I shouldn't say it was canceled, when Knit City got postponed, um, they uh, the Knit City folks, the organizers, uh, tried to put together some um, promotions to help the vendors who had all been preparing to come to this event and who were left with lots of inventory on hand. And so we've been talking to Ancient Arts about what we could do to help out and something that would um, also um, help those in need in Canada. And we came up with, um, with an incentive and an idea, uh, a promotion to, um, to give every, to, to take 20% of the proceeds from the sales of certain ancient arts yarns and uh, take that money and give it to uh, food bank Canada um, in order to assist them with a bit of a, cash donation uh, to help with making sure that people in need are getting the food that they need. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we decided that we would work with the yarns that we have here in our shop and ancient arts would also uh, put those yarns up for this particular promotion. So those yarns are ancient arts, Socknado, um, ancient arts, Lasco and Lasco fine. And these are all available on our online store so beginning uh, April, what did we say, Barb? April 5th? I think we said the 6th, but it, it, uh, um, I think we're pretty much ready to go whenever this goes live. So right. I think I- the other thing to mention too, Cynthia, is, you know, I was just touched when I heard about the situation the food bank is in, right? Like, you know, um, it's a tough time out there for everybody, but for them, they've not only lost some of their big corporate sponsors, um, restaurants are closed and a lot of places are closed that used to provide food for them on a regular basis. So um, I think that you, you mentioned they're looking for cash, right? Yeah, so they, it was. I was on CBC. Uh, they were talking to food banks because they've, you know, again, they've lost their volunteers they're uh, in, in that they're a lot of their volunteers have to stay home and right. uh, they've, they've gone to situations where they've it's the one that the, the news uh, feature that I saw showed a food bank in Ontario where they actually had a conveyor belt going outside so that uh, into a tent and so that people who people could kind of get out of the wind and the cold to pick up their their food and they were packaging up food hampers that would last a week rather than a few days, because again, oh. not everyone can get out and come and pick up uh, those hampers. They were yeah. also saying that because schools are closed, the 
um, the need at food banks is even greater because um, a number of school programs, a number of schools have lunch programs in place. And so kids can eat lunch at school. But now that they're at home, their families are having to provide meals, like three meals a day. And that can be really difficult if you don't have the the money for the, the, the additional groceries. Yeah. So yeah, cash oh. is always cash is you know with with any organization like that, cash is just a currency that people can use to purchase the food items that they need, and uh, you know anything else that they need to run their operations during this time. So we thought a cash donation would be really helpful and timely, um, and we thought what better way than to do a promotion with our good friends at Ancient Arts mm-hmm. and. Um, and it would divert some of the revenue that we would be making to a really good cause. Exactly. I love that idea. So uh, it, come on out and have a look and see if there's any colors of Socknado um, that you really like. It's the most beautiful Italian merino. And Caroline does such a, a nice job of dyeing it up. The um, Lasco, we also have a really good supply of. So if you, I think even a few sweater quantities. So if you want to use a beautiful British Isles um, wool, um, that's probably the one to look at. The uh, Lasco Fine, I know we've got uh, some good stock of too, but if you need additional, you can go to Carolyn's website and get it there as well. Right. And so the this particular promotion we want to do in a in a shorter period of time, we want to get some money off as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run this one from April 6th to April 20th. Depending on the take up and uh, how supplies go, we could run it a little bit longer, but those are the dates that we've decided for for now. And then if you want details on this, or if you were looking for pattern inspirations, um, we will put uh, pattern links to patterns on each of the product pages. Uh, so I'll put a link in the show notes to Socknado, Lasco, and Lasco Fine. And then if you'd like to see some of the pattern ideas that we have and Carolyn uh, from Ancient Arts has, we'll put links to them there. And Carolyn yeah. offered us uh, some patterns as well that we can post on our website that are her designs. And we'll um, we'll have them available for you there also. Nice. You know, Cynthia, I just remembered we have Aiden knit up. And so um, we could possibly put a picture of that up here too. Uh, it's such a nice uh, sort of, um, what did you call it a Gansy, Cynthia? It's a Henley pullover. A Henley, that's the name I was looking for. So just kind of a lot of patterning up here at the yoke with a zipper that you steak in afterwards. No, not steaked. It's uh, it's it's uh, oh. no cutting. No cutting, but the the zipper you put you do put the zipper in, but it's you knit around it. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was steep. <laughs> I'll make a note, and we'll add uh, we'll add in uh, a photo or a video of Aiden in here. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody wants to make that, it's just a really nice sort of unisex sweater. It can be worn by men or women, and uh, it's the perfect pattern for Lasco. That's right. Yeah, it was designed for us by Ann Budd, and she used our Epic yarn for it. Um, so the pattern itself is available on our website, and uh, and then we just we had it re-knit in uh, Lasco, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't believe too how nice that sweater has held up. You know, there's no pilling. The yarn is just beautiful. There's something about you know a really good. Uh, wool to begin with and then with Caroline's dyeing that she does over top the colorway was beautiful that's right yeah that's right all we, right so that's a promo and now um we were also going to talk about a promo that another yarn company is doing that we we like we like a lot and that's yeah. um, Rowan that's right Rowan's coming out with a knit along it's uh, a pattern called the elder throw and it's really nice. You need to go to Rowan and check it out. It's a design by Lisa Richardson, and it's different sort of squares. So it's like um, sort of like a sampler, uh, but uh, done in different colorways. And it's done with felted tweed, which is kind of one of our favorites. 
Um, Lisa has come up with 13 colors, and I think some have two balls, some have one. Uh, but uh, you can, if you get one of each ball, you can start right away, and you don't have to have all the colors. Um, and then you can add on as you go. There's also uh, like there's a recommended color palette that all goes together. And then Lisa came up with a second palette because uh, some of the stores were running out of some of the colors. So you, if you can't find the first, you know, kind of brown shade, she's done a second sort of um, color recommendation that all go together. And it's so nice when you go to the Rowan website, you can see the shade cards there. And um, you can just see how all those colors would really look well together in, in this throw. So for those of you who love knitting blankets, me, uh, there's another project for us. Well, that sounds really good. So is um, has Rowan released all the pattern uh, oh. colors already? No. I think April 3rd, they come out with the first one. So right now you can just do your shopping and get your yarn supplies together. And then it starts on the 3rd and it runs to, I believe, sometime in July. So it's quite a, a long one. Okay. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then we were talking, you and I were talking about Mason Dixon and a little March mayhem that they were, um, yeah. that they were doing. That's right. You know, Mason Dixon does this March mayhem every year. They go to Ravelry and pick patterns, I think, that they really like. I'm not exactly sure how they come up with them, but they have this whole list of patterns, and then they filter it down through a voting process, and they come up with the number one sock, the number one pattern for, you know, um, like shoulder cozies and scarves and the number one sweater. So they've got this going on right now, and it's been a lot of fun. You've played along, right? Well, I, I haven't really haven't really been playing along, but I think right now I'm going to try and share my screen and we'll just pop over to the Mason Dixon website and have a look okay. at their March Mayhem. Okay. Okay. This so, will be fun. Yeah, I think so. Let's see here. I'm going to go here. All right. Can you see my, can you see my screen there, Barb? Your Google screen. Yep. You can see it. Okay. So I'm going to type in March Mayhem Mason Dixon. Technology, holy moly. I'll tell you. That's cool. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. So here we are. Uh, this is, so of course we're filming this before uh, we're going to share it. And so by the time you share it, the, um, the March mayhem will be over, but uh, we were just looking at this because you were, you were talking to me about your vote for round four. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I was thinking, yeah, you know, uh, I was looking at those things and you, you'd mentioned um, that you thought the woodland loafers were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I just thought those are really neat. I want to make those definitely. I don't know if I can wait. I think I might have to cast on right away though. Yeah. Aren't those cool? They're very cool. I love those. Yeah. So now I'm going to see if I can go back to our, there we go. Back to our regular screen. Mm -hmm. And um, here we go. So uh, Barb, I yeah. think we should, I think we should knit some woodland loafers. I do too. Yeah. What yeah. would you do yours out of? Um, so it's a, it's a chunky yarn and they're knit on five millimeter needles. So I'm kind of thinking I would maybe do epic double stranded. Oh, yeah. I'd like to try that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That what would be you? nice. Uh, well, I was just thinking cocoon, you know, that would make, make a real cozy sort of slipper too. I don't know how much it takes, but probably two balls would do it. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a really good choice. Uh you use cocoon and uh I'll use epic double stranded and what shall we shall we see who goes for, who who gets it done first? <laughs> of course, the competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we have to maybe um yeah, I think we should just get together on the weekend virtually and cast on together. We oh. could do another little YouTube or another Zoom. Okay, yeah, we could do that. 
You think you think they can be knit in a day, do you? Well, pretty close. I mean, that's not a big one, at least. <laughs> All right, you're on. Okay, I'll, I'll see you on. I'll see you on Sunday because I'll have yeah. to work on Saturday. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> okay, Woodland Slippers. Uh, we'll we'll be wearing them then for our next podcast. Hey. All right, there we go. Okay, sounds good. Oh, they're, they're not woodland slippers, they're woodland loafers. Right, that's right. Get the name right. And then after this podcast is over, I will go and make my vote. Oh, good. Yeah, it would be nice if they ended up uh, winning the contest too, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. So, uh, Barb, you had this idea for a mystery knit along uh, for, for, you know, for us. Well, I think it's so important to have things to do right now, right? Like how many people are at home? I mean, you can only watch so much television and daytime television is crappy. <laughs> That's the time. So uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to do a knit along. And we're always, um, well, you had done all the work, Cynthia, with the Knitting 101 videos, like, or the Learn to Knit videos. And I thought, It'd be fun to have something that after somebody's learned how to knit, they could just do a something easy, like a, a bit of a sampler. So this could be, you know, like a, a project where you just start to apply different knit and purl sort of combinations into stitch patterns. So I th we thought I thought it would be fun too if we made it mystery, if we didn't tell anybody what it was, we just kind of gave clues and. Um, and then you start knitting along. What do you think? Yeah, I think that we, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So yeah. you, you had, um, and so again, we were thinking about yarns that were really accessible and affordable and nice to work with, right? Mm -hmm. so the yarns that would hold their stitch definition. And yeah. so uh, we talked about using Epic as the yarn for the mystery knit along. Right. And I think we'll keep it to that, you know, we'll keep it to Epic. Um, if somebody wants to uh, upgrade, you know, fine. I mean, that's great too. But as long as it's sort of a worsted weight wool, I, I think blue sky wool stock would work really nicely too if somebody wanted or ha had that in their stash and wanted to use it. Right. Um, I mean, Eden would be lovely too. Eden would be gorgeous. Just, just saying, you know, not telling you what the end project is, but just saying. Yeah. There are a lot of beautiful yarns that you could use. And mm -hmm. you could use something from your stash, too, if you want to. Sure. The but, idea is that you just want to get along, get around uh, together as a community, right? Right. And um, we're going to be posting, uh, I think, a hashtag or several hashtags so that anybody who wants to show their project, what they're doing, can show it off on social media channels. And we can all take a look at each other's work. That's right. So I think we've decided that the hashtags are going to be um, hashtag RCYKAL, hashtag, so that's RCYCAL. And um, we can also, we're also going to add in uh, hashtag RCY Epic Yarn and RCY Epic Patterns. Uh, that way uh, we've got a few hashtags that you can use so you can see how everybody's doing on their project. Great. Yeah. And um, we will also, um, oh, okay. So tell us, Barb, how, uh, how we're going to do this. When are we starting? Okay. Um, what, I can't remember what day did we say. We were talking about this this morning. Right. So um, I think we're, we're going to call it an official start date on April the 15th. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll release the first part of the pattern on the 15th. So you'll get uh, the first section of it and you'll start working away. And um, then we'll come out with the second segment on the 22nd of April. And the third, which will be the final instruction, will be on April 29th. So that'll be the last piece of the pattern and any sort of finishing techniques that you might need. Right. And so this is a mystery knit along, which means that the patterns themselves will be revealed, but we could tell people what the project is for, right? Oh, no. No? Well, then it wouldn't be a mystery, would it? <laughs> well, 
well the design I thought maybe the pattern designs are the mystery but the, oh. the thing that you're making okay so well at least we'll tell people that you need to have um what is it three three balls of epic if you want to do one version of the project and six balls of epic if you want to do the other version of the project right okay let's just tell them what it is <laughs> go ahead um, one version is a scarf and the other one is a wrap. So it's the same pattern, but we've designed it so that you can double the amount of stitches, sort of. It, it, it's uh, got a little bit of uh, math in there. But um, you can make sort of like a 72-inch long scarf, or you can make a wrap um, much wider and a little bigger. Yeah. So, I think having seen having seen the the preliminary uh, swatch work that you've been okay. doing, I'm very excited about it. I think this is going to be really fun. And part of the part of the reason why I think it's going to be so fun is because I think Epic is a particularly good yarn for this type of project. And yeah. the, the stitch patterns that you've chosen, I think, are again they'll they'll provide a little bit of challenge for people. Uh, but they'll also be relaxing because there's nothing, nothing complicated in it. You have to pay yeah. attention, but it's not complicated. Right. And most of them, I think I'd call them TV knitting. There's only one that you probably should have some uh, removable tape. <laughs> that's right. There's, there's one that's a good audio book listen knit. And the rest, you could probably have the TV going and you'd be okay. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so that that's starting on April the fifteenth and finishing up at the end of April. Uh, finishing up in the sense that we'll have everything published by the end of April. But of right. course, if you want to start later, or if you're watching this podcast much later, the patterns will be available um, later. Of course, and we're going to publish those patterns up on our um, up on our website. So uh, you can go to rivercityyarns.com, click on the pattern section and um, go to RCY original patterns and all the patterns for this particular mystery knit along will be there. They'll be free of charge. So um, you just download them and away you go. Yeah, it'll be fun. Be nice to do, you know, with a, a group too. I really like, I'd love to see, you know, um, it done in different yarns and different colors and that'd be really fun. Yeah. So we'll, we'll again, you know, be encouraging people to post their pictures up on uh, social media so that we can um, all have a, a view of what's, of what's being made. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's, that's that one. Now we're also, uh, we've also been using this time to, um, get back to work on our pattern releases. Uh, so we have three, I think it's three new uh, pattern releases that we're going to be coming out with um, in April. Um, and so the first of them is um, a companion set to the Geneva vest. Right. Now, so for those of you who recall, uh, Geneva is a vest pattern. I'm wearing one today. Uh, Geneva is a vest pattern that um, we uh, Fiona Ellis designed for us out of Epic, and it's done in reverse stockinette stitch. So if you can you can see here, I've got the pearl side facing out on here, and that's to show off the cable design in here to its um, to its fullest. So I'm going to show you the hat here. This is oh, that's the back of the hat. So here's the at the design on the vest. You have these beautiful cables at the bottom of the vest. So the hat uses those cables on the front and the reverse stockinette fabric just makes those cables pop right out. So this is coming out uh, this month. This is the Geneva hat. Nice. And then we also have... Here, I'm Cynthia, so you can see the side of it. So you can see the slouch. Okay, ready? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cute. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I'll I look. Like the top, too, how it all gathers into the center. Yes. Yeah. Really pretty. And then there is also a matching pair of mittens to go with. You have those on backwards, though. <laughs> 
this is the ongoing argument that Barbara and I have, <laughs> which way is the right way. And I think the cables should be outside, but you know, you can decide. <laughs> yeah, I just had to tease you. That's all right. Very I, nice. Those I, are great. Too. Did you yeah. say you were going to put the vest on a mannequin too? Yes. So uh, what I will do is I'm, I've got, I'm wearing, I'm wearing the, um, I'm wearing a new version of the vest today. And um, it's the vest that I have on has a scoop neck rather than the oh, V-neck. Nice. So, yeah. So when we're done podcasting, I'll put both vests on two mannequins and then I'll take a little video so you can see all the details of the two vests. Um, and then mine is knit in a bigger size than our sample size. So um, you can see that there's there's quite a range of sizes that Fiona has put into this pattern for us. What Just color is that? This this vest? Mm -hmm. um, right behind you. Yes. Good call, Barb. Yeah. Uh, this is color 420. Okay. I think it might be called marine blue online but it's definitely color 420 it's the medium of the blues right we have a lighter one and a darker one that's correct yeah that's so lighter pretty. that color looks great on you thanks thanks mm. and, you know I, I kind of feel like you know with the hat and the mittens and the vest i i'm all i'm all cable You're all wooled out <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so this pattern set will come out this month. And for those of you who are thinking, you know, April, do we really need hats and mittens in April? I can tell you it's still pretty darn cold here in Edmonton. So, yeah, I'm I'm totally wearing hats and mittens uh, yeah. until until the temperatures reach a consistent 20 degrees <laughs> outside here. Yeah, for sure. So, uh and then yeah, so kudos to Fiona Ellis because uh, Fiona um, is just, uh, I think she's just brilliant with cables. We told her we wanted some vest options for our for our folks because uh, some of us uh, aren't very happy about knitting sleeves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's nice too, you know, it gives you something to knit that doesn't, you know, cost so much money too, right? You can... See, you know, the amount of yarn in those sleeves is as much as the sweater sometimes. So this one that's has a yarn budget the, in half. Yeah, the smallest size of this vest takes mm -hmm. three balls of Epic. So No kidding. Yeah, so if you're a tiny person, you can do it for as little as $36 Canadian. Yeah, wow. That's really great. Yeah. Okay, so we have another new big reveal. Um, okay. and that's these uh, Lux slipper socks by Kate Atherley. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, I saw those, and they are beautiful. Yeah. So now, this, you know what? We might have to make these to go inside our woodland loafers. <laughs> that's a good idea. So this is the original sample that Kate Atherley made for us, and this is done out of Red Fox. Oh my um, God! Look at those stripes on the heel. Like almost, it looks like a helix. Yeah. So I, I have a feeling, Barb, that um, uh, when you talk, uh, we'll we won't see the picture anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Uh, oh, okay. So, so shut up. Is what <laughs> just for a second. Just for a second. So these these are red fox, and um, there are. Um, they are luxury socks. And then uh, we had Pat knit up a pair for us as well. And this is also Eden in Indigo. Okay, Barb, you can talk now. <laughs> well, those are beautiful. I have to say, you know, Red Fox is probably one of my favorite uh, Eden colorways. But I love the way it stripes up on the heel. Right. The other thing about this yarn, Cynthia, is um, it's so soft and warm and cozy. It would make the most perfect kind of bed socks, which is where where I would wear those. Yeah, I think these are, again, you know, um, we didn't anticipate this, but in the time of the pandemic, the, the, the nice thing about this is that you can, you can make these beautiful socks. And while you're at home, you can wear them while you're reading a book. You can wear them to bed. You can just wear them around the house. And they're going to make you feel warm and cozy and uh, help you with that cocooning period that we're all in. 
The other thing I wanted to show you is that this is how much yarn is left over from uh, making a pair of these slipper socks. So I haven't tried it yet, uh, but I have a feeling, Barb, that you could make two pairs of slipper socks, depending on the size of the foot that you're making them for, out of right. one ball of Epic. Wow, that's great. Mm. Yeah, we should weigh that, Cynthia, and then we could tell people for sure. Yeah, but, I'll, I'll, yeah. See if I, I'll see if I have my little scale here. Oh, you know what? We I got have it. a little scale here, so okay. I'm just, just going to do that right now, and I will tell you how much we have. <laughs> so, uh, Barb. Um, so these these uh, skeins weigh 115 grams to begin with, and this one weighs 54.8 grams. So what? Sorry, you weighed them both together? No. Oh, so the ball itself weighs 54.8 grams, and the socks weigh 58.6 grams. So to squeak out a second pair, you might have to make the cuff a little shorter or use another yarn in the cuff. And of course, if you make them a bit longer, then um, you won't have as much yarn either. But it's very, very close. Yeah. All right. So that those are called um, Lux Slipper Socks by Kate Atherley. And those will be out by, uh, along with this episode. So we'll... Um, We'll put links in, in the show notes. And then we have a, the Zurich Hats by Eric Lutz. Now, I don't have the Zurich Hats here to show you, but I will insert pictures afterwards. Um, these these uh, tr these hats were inspired by, um, yeah, so here's what he says uh, at the beginning of the pattern. On a wonderful trip to Zurich, I was struck by the intentional geometry of the paving stones in Sechsulautenplatz, Zurich's largest open town square, paving laid of gorgeous gray quartzite cut into variable width strips creates an ever-changing textural perspective which is inspired by the gentle tapering of the ribs in this hat. Uh, so that's the inspiration for Wow. <laughs> that's nice. And then this one's also made out of uh, RCY Epic. And uh, Eric did the hats uh, in colorways that we had before uh, before the new order. So now you have, uh, what, Barb, six new colors to choose from? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you can make a whole family of hats. So um, there's sizing. You've got for different sizes in the pattern too, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's size yeah. for the littlest people in your family as well as the bigger people in your family. Nice. It's so nice to have something from Eric. This is his first pattern for us. And uh, we met him, you know, several years ago. He actually came to Edmonton and uh, hung out with us and the grocery girls and did a video. So it's really nice to finally make a connection with Eric. Thank you, Eric. We love that. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time coming and we're so happy that you were able to design something for us. Yeah, it's very exciting. And so we're hoping everybody, you know, all of our friends, our designer friends are are finding some time right now maybe to uh, work on all of their creative outlets and hopefully they're feeling good and healthy as well. Yes. Right. So three, three new designs. So, uh, you know, uh, again, we've all been busy, busy, busy working away. And so that, you know, making the, making the most of this time that we have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So speaking of making the most of time, Barb, what have you finished? <laughs> Tell us about your finished objects that you've been working on since uh since you've been since our last oh, podcast. Oh my god. Um you oh. know, not not a lot, Cynthia. I've you know had um I've been working on that sample uh knit along, mystery knit along. So that's kind of been on my needles. And then I did that Rosalind Cowell. Right. Yeah, um, I've got a I have another just little sample here. I just started knitting round and round and round we go with two colors of El Rio. Oh, cool. And I'm not sure what it's going to be. It's just, it's just something striped in the round. Oh, oh, hold it up again, Barb, while you talk about it, and I'll be quiet so that the so everyone can see it. 
Oh, do it. It's just um, it's just a round uh, piece of knitting. I just cast on a bunch of stitches, and I do, was just kind of playing with El Rio in this beautiful blue shade. And then I thought, oh, what would it look like if I striped it? So it's just kind of like a big infinity loop. Uh, I think, you know, you could probably almost see how soft this yarn is. Oh, it's just, it's beautiful, you guys. So cushy. Nice. And you're doing that in garter stitch? Um, oh, is it in garter? It's been a while since I did it. Uh, no, I think I'm doing knit a row, purl a row. Yeah. Doing knit a row, purl a row so that you don't uh, see the, you know, the, ch the jogs, the changes in the color. Um, right just right there where the back is, but yeah. Yeah, so knit a row, curl a row is garter stitch in the round, right? Yes, yeah. And I was doing one, like two and two, and then I started going up to uh, four. So there's, now it's starting to be wider stripes. Yeah, and the other thing, I did have one other thing on the needles, Cynthia. Do you remember that book from, Cecilia, I'm going to mess her name up, Campanella, or on sequence knitting. Yes. Remember that? Um, so I had some um, yarn from Blue Sky Fibers. This is extra. And so I started a little cowl with this using uh, mistake rib for the bottom. And then I transitioned into sequence knitting. So there's this pattern that's starting to develop. Pull it up just a bit Can more. Can you see that? Talk, talk some more. Can you see that? I can't see because I'm holding it in front of my camera. But um, this is uh, just a simple knit stitch or knit and purl pattern. It's knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three. And when you get to the end of the round, you'll have like a knit two. And so you keep going on the next round. So you knit your third knit stitch on the next round. And what happens is it starts to shift. And so you're doing exactly the same pattern over and over, but you get this wonderful sort of a staggering effect called sequence knitting. Oh, cool. So this is something that you picked up from the book? Yes. Yeah, and it's it's lovely because you can, you know, watch TV, you can talk, you can do whatever you want, and you're getting a really cool pattern. It's actually forming sort of a bit of a slanted uh, effect. There we go. Yeah, that's gorgeous. It's fun. Yeah, I have I have that book too, so I definitely need to find some time to leaf through it. <laughs> That's right, you do. And this yarn, Cynthia, oh my God, it is so beautiful. I've never knit with uh, extra before, and I have to tell you, it's one of one of my all time favorites. Right. So extra is Blue Sky Fibers Alpaca Merino Blend. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's fifty fifty. And is, See, this, this is it, might be another thing to do with our El Rio is to mix our uh, new baby alpaca with a merino, like, um, you know, hat trick semi solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's it's just beautiful to knit with, and it feels, it knits like a dream, and it feels amazing. Is it a chunky weight yarn? Yeah, I think it's, I want to say, Erin, uh, or maybe even, I'm using a size. 375 mil needle with it. Oh. Yeah. So I think it's sort of Aaron. Well, that's really nice. You're having fun with that then. So, sorry, I'm holding these things up. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. We're just still getting used to this technology. Yeah, I, I think you're doing just fine. Okay. Well, that's really good. So that's, that's uh, a work in progress then. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, let's see, I dig yeah, through what it. have you got? I've been working on, I'm still working on my Roslyn sweater. Oh, right. How far are you along on that one? I've got the back done, 
and I'm working on the, let's see, this will be the right front. Yeah. And I'm at the point now where I'm going to put in a bit of color work. So I've just stopped briefly, but this is the Navy in Epic. Nice. Amazing. And then I've, uh, there's, there, there's waist shaping in here. So these are my stitch markers that I've been using there. Uh, up here, I've got my cocoa knit stitch markers and I've been using my little metal, uh, my little magnet um, wristband so that I can keep the stitch markers on. And that helps me to count because I just put five stitch markers on my, on my wristband, my magnetic wristband. And then as I put them in every four rows, I know when I'm done my increases. Mm, and so, you can visually see them. Do you have the same ones going on on the other side? Yes. Yeah, so I uh, I have the same markers on the back uh, so that I can pair them up. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's been fun. I like that one. And then um, I I was, you know, doing some stuff with crochet more recently. And so I found this pattern online. And I will put a link to it in the show notes, but it's a very simple pattern for a crochet stitch where you do one single crochet and then a double crochet and then a single crochet and a double crochet. Oh, isn't that pretty? Yeah. So you get a, you get a really nice textured pattern um, and it's just alternating two very simple stitches. On the next row, you will do a double crochet on top of the single crochet and a single crochet on top of the double crochet. That's really pretty. I've been working through all of my stash yarns to make little um, little uh, face claws or dish claws. So here's one in navy blue. You can't really see it very well. And here's one where I used up two ends of a ball. Is it all crochet? Yep. It's all crochet. Mm -hmm. You start... You just, uh, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of crochet is that you start with, you just chain the width that you want your, your cloth to be. And then you just make sure it's uh, an even number. Right. And you start with a single crochet and you end with a double crochet. And then when you turn it around, you start with a single crochet, you end with a double crochet. And as they say, Bob's your uncle. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really fun and I can do, I can do one dish cloth. Uh, you know, in about, I'd say in about two hours. So wow. yeah. Yeah. And so I'm having lots of fun with that. I'm using uh, the, the one I like using the best is the um, Barocco Pima 100. It's a hundred percent cotton and it's really nice to work with, but I was thinking that this is, it's really fun and relaxing and you know, how crochet just works up a little bit faster than knitting. I was thinking it'd be really cool to do a blanket, like a baby blanket and to use that new um, uh, Juniper Moon Cumulus in the gradient colorways. Yeah, um, It's a nice big hook so that your blanket stays like soft and fluffy and then the colors change on their own. I mean, you can use any yarn at all with this simple crochet pattern. Mm -hmm. and um, make yourself something really nice yeah the cumulus would be great somebody was uh just bought some of that to make um the little button sweater for a kid oh yes that it's such a soft soft cotton it would make a really beautiful blanket that's for sure mm -hmm. or a sweater or uh or a wrap or a shawl you know whatever whatever you want the colors yeah. are really spectacular that's that um, Israeli macro cotton, so soft, and a little bit of nylon in there, so it would be really stable, too, and, and wear well. Yeah, it's a chainette yarn, so you get lots of air inside there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm itching to try that next, but uh, first things first, right? Well, no, go just go cast on. <laughs> cast it all on. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about what's coming up uh, for us. We've got Flash Mob uh, on April the 20th. That's we, right. That's right. And this is a very special month. This is the month that um, we had Caroline design us a yarn that was inspired by the book Peter Rabbit. Yeah, here here is the here's the little book that was the inspiration. And we sent Carolyn a um uh an image of that, I think it's of that title 
uh, shot of Peter Rabbit in his little blue jacket. And here's what she came up with. And I think that she's captured the, you know, the colors of the photograph that we gave her so beautifully in this variegated yarn. And then she's attached um, a 50 gram, uh, you can't really call this a mini, can you? But a 50 gram uh, partner skein. Uh, I think you need to take off that label, Cynthia. Which label? The, both of them. So you can show everybody how pretty the yarn is. Sure, yes. The label's covering up about, you know, one quarter of the skein. You're absolutely right. So let's do this again. Yeah, here, here. Oh, my gosh. Look at the speckles on that. So th there's uh, some blue speckles that are so pretty and, and the green ones, too. Yeah. So the, um, the, the, um, the two skeins come together in a set. And uh, the, the larger skein is called Peter Rabbit. And the smaller skein is called Little Blue Jacket. Um, and so those, those are our flash mob yarns. They come paired together and they will be available on April the 20th at 6 p.m. on our online store. And uh, packaged up with the skeins is a cute little button from Brick Bubble. Uh, she's Aww. <laughs> she's designed a little carrot button for us uh, because we told her that the book this month was Peter Rabbit and so a carrot is so appropriate that's really cute now I just want to let everybody know that this skein of um, ancient arts Sofnato is big this is the same size skein that we use for our hockey yarn our hat trick yarn so there's not just 100 grams there, there's 150 grams and over 500 meters of yarn there. The smaller skein is 50 grams and I want to say 150 meters? 175. 175. Yeah. Okay. So you've got tons of yarn there. Cynthia, what else could you make with that uh, besides socks? Right. Well, well, actually, we were talking earlier about making socks with it and, and actually doing knee highs. And you reminded me that we have this gorgeous pattern for Rock'em socks, knee high socks. Oh, yes. That would be amazing to use that for, for Rock'em socks. Right. So this um, this pattern is designed for us by Barb Brown. She's a, an Alberta-based designer, and she designed it using uh, our hat trick yarn. So they're called Rock'em Socks because uh, because it's the hockey theme. Mm -hmm. um, and these these socks um, have a uh, these socks have a panel uh, down the back. So if you're working with a variegated yarn, this panel down the back of your socks will help to organize those variegations into a really pretty distorted, like sort of a pretty, I call it distorted, but it breaks up the patterning on the back of the sock and you'll have the, the effect of the semi-solid or the variegated yarns on the front. And then we were thinking that a uh, little, little blue jacket, the, the 50 gram skein would make a really nice heel and toe option if you were to use the variegated yarn for the body of the sock. Mm -hmm. You could probably have enough to use it for the cuff too, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Rock'em socks are used, use up a 150 gram skein of our hat trick hockey yarn. And so you will likely have enough to do an entire pair with just the one skein of Peter Rabbit. But wouldn't it look so nice if you were to add in a little bit of that contrasting color on the cuff, the heel and the toe, you got plenty yeah. of yarn. So yeah. you may, you, you will likely have leftovers, even if you do make the knee highs. And we were thinking that with the leftovers, it would make a really cute, um, a hat for Rachel, which is one of our in-house patterns or um, our baby sock pattern. So you could make a uh, mama pair and a baby pair. Um, that would be really lovely. That would be really cute. Yeah, I could see little Rachel's hat done in that. You know, you could use the um, the blue jacket for the brim, you know, and do the red, the crown in the hand painted. That would be really nice. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? 
Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we need to warn people that last month uh, we sold out our flash mob really quickly. And we also sold out on the books really fast. So um, if you want to get in on the on the flash mob yarns, make sure that you have your uh, make sure that you have a subscription to our newsletter because we'll send out a reminder email with the photographs and links uh, right right at the time that the flash mob starts and yeah. then you put your order in. Yeah. We, we only got a few of the books because we're not a bookseller, we're a yarn seller, uh, but we thought we'd bring in a few copies of the books in order to um, help with, you know, help with the inspiration. And uh, I, for one, want a copy of this book because I think yeah. it'd be a great, a great book for Rachel and I and Rachel and Hayden and I to read together. Yes. Yeah. And I think you can get extra copy like books, maybe on amazon.com or indigo or something like that. If yeah. you're sold out of them, but yeah, for, for everybody who wants to get the yarn, check on the book and see if it's in stock and, and add one to your cart. Yes. And that, that reminds me, you know, uh, talking about reading stories and social distancing, that's, that's what my, so what I'm doing with my grandkids every evening is reading them a chapter of a book via uh, FaceTime. And so they're in their, they're in their beds tucked under their blankets and the lights are off and, and there's Omi's voice Aww. reading the story to them. Aww. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, it's really hard when you, when you're not able to see your family on a regular basis and, and to do the things that you would normally do. So that's how we're, yeah. how we're substituting. And that's, kind of the idea that you and I had Barb about keeping in touch with our community. Cause we're, again, you know, we, we run a lot of workshops and right now we're not able to do that. So we're trying to um, figure out, you know, just what we can do with um, different online platforms to um, stay connected with people who want to learn. That's right. Yeah. And it, I'm trying to get good at this too, because I'm not a little technology challenged, but I could see this would be a great way to communicate with Sabrina and the kids to, you know, get them on, uh, get everybody on the computer on zoom.ca and have a group chat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, I'll tell you about another, um, uh, another networking um, app that we're using in our family called house party. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah, I think you you'd like said you were playing cards or something. Uh, we, we tried to do that, but uh, the house party is a little bit better because it, it actually has the games built into it. So um, you don't have to try and set up your table with something that people can share. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Okay, I'll go check that out. Yeah. And let's see, what else? Um, you were going to talk about uh, virtual shopping, Barb. So tell us about that idea. Oh, well, you know, here in the shop, we've had so many people um, ask us, you know, about um, questions that they had about finding the yarn for a sweater and making size substitutions and things like that. So I thought it'd be fun if um, maybe you and I took a real live example from one of our customers and did a little video like this. uh, So where, you know, we could simulate uh, what we went through to actually find the yarn and the pattern for this customer yeah i think i think there's some some skills that we've uh, learned in terms of making substitutions that it would be really great to share with others Mm -hmm. okay we'll put that on our list yeah you know i'm just sitting here cynthia too looking at at my hair oh man (laughs) does anybody else miss their hairdresser (laughs) and their nail technician Yes. Man, I need a haircut bad. Hey, before we go, Barb, uh, mm-hmm. I I, th- I just thought maybe uh, you could tell the story that you told me the other day about being, um, you know, we were, when we put out, what was it? We put out Flash Mob uh, earlier this month, and at the same time, the Brooklyn Tweed news went out, and we were inundated with online orders, and you had a you had a thing that happened to you. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I think I think that's um, that one needs its own timing, right? Like, <laughs> well, let me see if I can if I can do it. Okay, let me set the scene for you. Cynthia and I have worked like four days in a row doing mail orders, and we're not that great at doing mail orders. We have people to help us doing mail orders, people that we miss a lot, and we want them to come back to work as soon as they can. 
Uh, but anyways, we were doing our best. And I was coming in really early uh, in the morning and Mario was with me. And Cynthia and I have had, been asking our husbands to help out. And so Mario and I come in in the morning and we were doing all the mail outs. And then Cynthia and Mike would come in in the afternoon and they would pull all the orders that had come in um, between that time and get them ready for the next day. And so like I was up at probably 6 a.m. I had just done laundry the night before and um, I'm not always fully awake in the morning. So I just jumped into a pair of jeans and went off to work and um, worked all day. And then I think I connected with you, Cynthia, later that night, right? Yep. And then I think you were, you're were you also connecting with our other sister. Right. So, you know, when I got home at the end of the night, I checked in with Lynn and I checked in with Cynthia. And as I was chatting with Lynn on the phone, um, I looked down and my leg, it had a big, big lump on it. I thought, oh my God, what happened there? And so, you know, I felt my jeans and here there's this big lump and I reach in and, and there's something inside my leg and I pull it out. Here's a pair of panties. <laughs> I took those jeans out of the washing machine and I just jumped into them and like, you know, out of the dryer and there must have been something stuck in them. And I really think, Cynthia, that, you know, <laughs> this pair of panties was stuck like really far up my leg. But as I worked through the day and as I came home at night, they traveled downward and they ended up being around, you know, my ankle. <laughs> so the only reason I found them was because they were probably going to fall out and trip me the next time. You know, it's always a good idea to take a pair, a, a, a spare pair of underwear with you wherever you go. <laughs> Yeah, really. Didn't mom always tell us like that? You know, don't get, you know, always wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had two pairs. Oh, my goodness, Barb. I can't stop yeah. laughing. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And you, and you kind of think like you, at the end of a day like that, you've got swollen feet. So why shouldn't you have a swollen leg? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, was well. all, it was all good. Anyways, I had uh, my next day's outfit was, you know, planned in advance. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Well, I think I think we've got all the information that we want to convey to our to our friends out there. Yeah. And we, we want to just say thank you. I think we want to say thank you, everybody, for all the wonderful support that you've been giving us on our on our in our business. Um, we mm -hmm. really appreciate the fact that you're continuing to connect with us online and helping us to um, keep our business up and running. So um, mm -hmm. a very, very grateful thank you to everyone for that. Yeah. And thank you too for uh, listening and watching. This has been a real challenge for us because it's a brand new technology and uh, we hope that we did okay and that you're, you're, you can still hear us and, and watch. I hope that this is still recording. <laughs> well, we'll see soon. We'll see you soon. Yep. Anyways, um, stay tuned for Zandi's message. I think it's uh, she's she's really um, she's such an interesting person. She's so smart. Yeah, yeah. She's right. gonna be showing some new projects. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. for now, I'll talk to you later, Barb, and see you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week, this month. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.